want to learn examples like this with me, keep watching to learn how. After what we learned from the electric current, which is our first topic for in the first section, and this is basically going to be our second section, which is about electromagnetic waves or voltage. Okay. Now, this section is related to previous section, so if you haven't watched that, go ahead and watch that. You can find it on my playlist. But what we learned from the previous section is we compare the flow of the electric ch uh, charges to flow. Okay, in the water pipe. And we talked about lots of different things that we, uh, we, we talked about how the motion of electrons, the motion of protons, as you guys can see. Uh, then we talked about the conductors, uh, real life examples on conductors. We talked about, we compared uh, the moving electrons with a water pipe. Okay, now let's take a closer look at analog. Analog. Okay, water in the pipe will only flow. Okay, let's get real. Water in the pipe will only flow if there's imbalance of water pressure. So if there is imbalanced water pressure, only then the water flows through the pipe. Now, there must be a higher pressure at the one end than on the other to make it happen. Okay, that's basically important for this uh, water pipe or water in the water pipe to basically flow. But if it weren't the case, that one side of the pipe is, has a higher pressure then the water in the pipe wouldn't flow at all. Now similarly as I'm uh, to, taking the water concept and comparing with the electric concept okay electric charges so similarly similar to the water pipes um, electric charges will not flow unless there's imbalance of what we can say electric pressure okay like water pipes we talk about water pressure in electric there has to be electric pressure as well now there must be something that pushes the charges along with it well we have actually learned it okay what it is now let me go ahead and recap what it is now it is the electric potential energy now that is called the voltage as you guys can say now that supplies the electric pressure so electric potential okay which is the voltage and it's represented as V, okay? It's basically um, uh, doing the pressure or supplying the pressure that is to the electric currents, okay? So basically it supplies the electric pressure, as you guys can say, if you want to get more detailed about it. Now, how does it do it? Well, to in order to do that, one end of the conductor is at the higher uh, voltage, okay? And here I say voltage because it's, um, easier to say voltage in short form but if I have to be specific it, it's basically on the one end of the conductor it's basically high electric uh, potential uh, electric potential than the other to make the Im imbalance happen okay there has to be imbalance to actually make those electric charges to move in the steady path okay but if it were in the case we already know that if it weren't the case, if the water doesn't have the water pressure, imbalanced water pressure, we say that the water in the water pipe wouldn't move. Same with this concept that if it weren't the case when a conductor at one end has a high voltage pressure, then the electric charges wouldn't flow. Now, electric potential is something referred to electric motive force that is represented as EMF. Now let me just write that thing down, which is basically EMF. Okay, let me just erase this. And it's really easy to learn the short form because we say electric motive force. E mo electric motive force. EMF. Okay. So uh, okay. So now that we know the electric motive force, uh, let's take more, uh, how is it related to the conductor that we just talked about a moment ago. Now what happens is that this over here, EMF, actually supplies or you can say 
pushes the uh, that's causing the electric charges to flow. So when there is a conductor with uh, impro um, imbalanced pressure, electric pressure or wattage, uh, what's the what's electric motive force is doing is basically pushing those electric charges that causes the um, basically what it causes is basically it causes this to flow in the motion. Okay. Now there's three good source of electric force that is dry cells, well, uh, vet cells, and generators. So let me just write it. The first is what we talked about is basically dry cells. Second is wet cells. Third is generators. Okay, now this three are basically related to EMF, which is basically electromotive force. Now, this over here has three uh, more options, and which is good conductors, which makes the electric charges to flow very easily, okay? Now, I will talk about why I say easily, okay? But let's talk about the first one over here, which is dry cells. Dry and wet cells, include chemical reaction which basically produces a potential difference okay so this over here produces the ele electric um, produces a potential difference as you guys can say and batteries okay batteries are an example of a type of this type over here batteries are an example of dry cells and wet cells so I gave you the basics example now it will be zoomed on Okay, so power companies. Well, power companies usually supply uh, electromotive force of 120 volt that your house or remember from our previous section we talked about the Apple uh, electric wire. Now the how much voltage does it go into it to basically charge the iPad or i devices or Apple devices as you guys can say now. Basically, that amount of power basically supplied by the power companies. Now, that power companies has some amount has to supply some amount of electric charge to basically charge the object or make an object working or make it happen or make it whatever you guys can say. Now, that amount of charge is basically 120 watt. So, the electric companies produces 120 watt. Okay, electric company, C O M. Okay, that's uh, electric company produce 120 volts. That is in your house now. If you go to a big um, company where electric uh, things are making, like glass is being made at some factories or whatever. Now. That's not how much electric uh, uh, companies will produce that much force because it's, it has to have a great amount of power to actually do that. Okay, now from fundamental physics, we actually said what power is. It's not something that we used to lift an object. It's basically power is ability to do work. Now power, if you do more work in less amount of time, then you can say you have more power. Okay, so that's just a little preview of what I told you. Now, since the uh, factories need no more power, they need more uh, charge, more electric charge or more voltage to do things, to make things happen and give you the Apple devices. Now, Apple devices are made in factories, right? Let's be uh, real. Now, since they are made in factories, they don't get this amount of supply of voltage. They basically get more than that. Okay, now this over here is basically the voltage of your house, or you guys can say, uh, yep, house or home, whatever you say. Now, what's happening is that when you plug it in, when you see the adapter, okay, oh, let me just give you an example. This is adapter over here. Now, if you plug it in, if you plug it in your the home appliances where there's a circuit and you plug this in, what you're doing. It's basically giving the pressure, okay? You're causing them to flow. And the electrons are pushed with a pressure of 120 volt 
that which is being provided. So when you plug it in, that device, it's basically what you're doing is pushing it in, right? Now what's when you push it in, the electrons are basically uh, flowing into the electric wire that we talked about. Okay? Now the pressure of the voltage that's coming in with the electric wire is basically 120 volt which is basically causing them to flow okay and your um, uh, appliances or the Apple device are working only then in other words to just restate that what I just said here is basically voltage is causing the uh, current to flow now now what uh, let's talk about circuits since I said the circuit is basically on the wall let's go ahead and uh, learn more about circuits in detail now circuit is basically a name given to a completed path of electric charges to flow from high voltage to low voltage okay that's basically it that's a circuit so when you have a voltage that flows from high uh, high voltage to low voltage and the complete path of it is basically known as a circuit